Welcome back everyone to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Continuing on my little series of uh, restoration series videos, I'm making this video today uh, moving through different areas of overhaul for this Singer 301. Uh, you are looking at it, I'll zoom out so you can see what the original machine is of course. Those of you who may be just joining in, I, I number the restoration series to make it a little bit easier to follow. And today I wanted to uh, focus in on the tension assembly dial. Now, if you have a Singer 301 and it's running really well and you have great tension control, there's really no reason to, to engage in the procedure I'm going to show you today. But there are those of you who may be... Uh, are having some tension issues or maybe you want to overhaul your machine or you are getting into the restoration and overhauling of sewing machines vintage sewing machines and I wanted to show you how I go about um, uh, disassembling cleaning and then uh, inspecting and putting back together the tension assembly dial now sometimes uh, the entire uh, tension assembly, uh, uh, the, the whole structure of it is removed. And by that, I, there's, a, there's a large cylinder that all these pieces sit on. And I'll turn this to the side just a moment, if you'll bear with me here. I know you're getting a very close-up view. Uh, let's angle down, and I will show you. Some of you who have these machines, you may or may not have ever looked to see what goes on behind the tension dial. So here we are coming in from the side, and, and there's a reason I'll, I'll explain why I'm showing this to you. Um, now, whenever you are pulling up on your presser bar uh, or your presser foot bar lever, when you pull up on it, I want you to focus on this little spring right there. And it sits just behind the tension assembly. Watch what happens when I pull up. The, there's a lever that pushes on the spring. And that in turn is actually pushing. Uh, you'll see the spring being pushed, but I want you to focus a little bit further down and I'll get a flashlight to make this a little easier to see. I said flashlight. This is actually a shop light that I use when I'm trying to get in close. So when you look behind the tension assembly, what I'd like you to focus in on is this little spot right here. There's a pin, and this pin runs all the way through to the tension assembly, and these pieces, when I start to take them off, you'll understand there's a, uh, there's an, uh, there's a housing in here that this piece goes through. So if you stay focused on that pin, I'm going to, I'm going to hold this shop light and move the presser bar. I'm going to pull this up again. Notice that the pin is, is sticking out toward the inside of the machine. Now watch what happens when I lift up the presser bar. Notice that it pushes on that pin. Also, now while that's happening, look at this section of the tension assembly and watch what happens. I'm pulling up on the, I'm basically pulling the presser bar up again. Now watch the side of the, um, the assembly dials. Notice that they move. What's happening is the, uh, the two discs that the, that the thread normally rests between are being loosened. They're being pulled apart. And that is actually the, the, the condition you always want to thread your machine in. And then what happens is when I lower the presser bar as if as you would as if <clears throat> you were getting ready to sew, it's very interesting. All of a sudden you get uh, those two discs, and you'll see them in a minute. Uh, they they clamp together, and and depending on the number that you have set on your uh, thread tension, that determines how tight those discs will basically squeeze. They squeeze it as if they were two hands coming together. The reason I'm showing you this though is if that pin were stuck or missing, um, if it were missing you would have a lot of issues with your tension. Um, sometimes they get stuck or dirty. 
And if that's the case, you might want to investigate taking the entire unit out. And there's a set screw here uh, on every machine that I've ever seen. There's a set screw uh, on the side, and you loosen that in order to take the whole unit out. Now, this set screw here is the one I'm pointing at. That is the one I would loosen if I was having issues with this. But this machine was pretty clean. It was dry, but pretty clean. And because this, this little pin is moving, you know, it, it moves fine. And because of that, uh, I've decided that I'm not going to take that out. I'll do that on another future video because occasionally you will get sewing machines that have issues with, um, with that pin. I'm just sort of putting this up there so you can see when I get this little piece in here, I can push in. I don't know if you guys see that I'm put moving the pin and the pin is uh, spring loaded and it, it works fantastically. So again, I won't be doing that, but that just, I wanted to show that to you all because some of you may uh, occasionally take your um, tension dials apart and you still can't get your tension working and it's usually because there's something more going on behind there. But for our purposes today, I wanted to uh, mention to you, if you have a vintage machine, remember how old these machines are, uh, when I look at the tension assembly on any machine I'm overhauling, um, <clears throat> it's, it's funny, you could get the most beautiful, clean, perfect looking machine you've ever seen, and yet you might still have some uh, dirt or, or, or old oil. Uh, there shouldn't be any oil in here, but people do squirt it in there sometimes. So, uh, I want to know, uh, just for my own curiosity, how these discs look. And so we're going to take it apart today. Now, it's really important when you do this on any machine, whether it's this one or any other, to be sure that you have a plan for where you're going to put all the parts. One of the great things about Singers, and they're, I'm going to have to say the brand Singer is the most favorite brand that I have for working on. I'm not saying that there aren't other good brands of machines. I've sewn on many machines. I love Neckies. I love all of them. <clears throat> but in terms of being friendly to someone who's a sewing machine mechanic or a restorer, uh, the, the Singer tension assemblies are some of the finest ever made, and they were designed to be taken apart. The key is when you take it apart, to take photos. Now I've done these before, so I'm not going to take a picture, but I highly recommend if it's your first time ever doing it, you want to take a picture and definitely line the parts up in front of you in the order they went onto the machine and in the position they went. And I'll explain more as we go here. So I'm getting a little uh, late afternoon, early evening light. And a couple of things to explain. You will see in the center there is a um, <clears throat> sort of a drive shaft, threaded shaft, that all of these pieces fit on. Now, in order to get this knob off, you think, gosh, it won't move. What we need to do is we're gonna, I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to push in on the, the piece. There's a dial that sits behind the chrome knob, of the, and it's, uh, it's got the numbers on it. That's how you, uh, if you have one with numbers. Uh, I'm going to push that in, and then I'm going to be able to turn this knob. Now hold things, be careful because things are spring-loaded. You don't want them flying. Now there's on the back side of this little, um, it's, a, it's a set screw really. It's a, it, it allows you to move your tension and change it. There is a little knob or a little, little piece there. You're going to want to remember that because we're going to put it on in a certain position so that our numbers uh, line up properly. Okay, and notice that the zero and the nine are kind of right here, right lined up with this, um, where is it? This little silver uh, line here at the top. And there's a plus sign on the right and a minus sign on the left. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take my um, adjusting knob for my tensioner and I'm going to lay it down in exactly the right order. In fact, I'll show you uh, as we go along, I'll show you how, where I put them. The next thing that's going to come off is the numbered dial. This is the, the, the numbers on the dial help you understand how much uh, tension you have, right? And there's not really much there to speak of. Sometimes a little dust. I didn't really see any. 
But notice I'm going to put it down in, in exactly the, the way it's, it, it's coming off. Okay, because when you reassemble everything, you're going to do it in just the reverse order that you took it down. Now, <clears throat> the next piece I want you folks to see is this one. This is the stop washer, I'm going to call it that, on your tension assembly. And it, if you look closely at it, it looks like a ring with a, with a uh, straight piece that is horizontal. And notice that, that it lines up with the horizontal gap at the end of this drive of this drive shaft of this shaft or this the major pin shaft I guess you'd call it that everything in the assembly sits on now notice that it has a little we'll call it a little ear at the top here for lack of a better word but when I turn it in profile notice that that ear is facing toward me when I took it off it was like this that little ear has a shape to it and it has a curve and it curves toward you that's the way it goes on. And when we put it back on, we need to put it back on in the same way. If you turn it around backwards, it will not, your tension dial and assembly will not work. And <clears throat> I once had a machine that someone uh, gave to me because they had, they couldn't figure out how to make it work. And come to find out someone had taken it apart and put it back together in the wrong order and there were missing parts. So Again, I, I, and I was able to reassemble it properly. So be sure, like I said, when you take this down, put it, you know, like I say, in order, sort of in a row. Now, the next thing is a spring. This is often called a beehive spring, and you'll see why in a moment. Now, I'm taking it off. Woo, come here. I'm taking it off just like this, okay? Now, it's called the beehive spring because it's shaped like this. Now, I'm going to bring this closer to you guys, and I want you to look closely. When you look at the front of this spring, notice that part of it, it looks, it's, it's often described as pretending it's a teacup, right? So this is I'm going to need something smaller to point with than my finger. This, this little end of the spring, it's the very end. Think of that as the top of the rim of a cup. And then the curve is the bottom, right? Um, and we're just talking about this, this last top part here. You want it like this. It came off like that, and it needs to go back on like that. You don't want it like that, okay? You don't want it looking like the letter E. You want it looking like a little teacup. Uh, well, that's what we'll call it, okay? And that is going to be the next thing we take down. What's next? <clears throat> the next piece is kind of like, uh, it's another black dial. And of course, this one, um, it simply has a plus and a negative, right? It's part of this assembly. It doesn't move. And you'll notice that pieces that don't move have these little uh, horizontal bands that are going to lock them in place onto this, uh, this uh, threaded shaft here. So again, I'm going to put it in the same down in the same order uh, that I had it and I'm looking on the back and I see a, what do I see here aha I'm seeing just a little bit of dust uh, a little bit of old it could be old lint who knows what it is remember this thing may not have been disassembled since 1951 so it's, it's actually looking pretty good <laughs> considering its age <sighs> and I didn't need to put any cleaner on that it came <clears throat> it came right off uh, and there was nothing behind it. Well, I say nothing. Eh, a little bit. I'll come in here and... And so, it is now ready to come off. Now notice, it was like this. The plus sign is on the right. When we put it back, we don't want to put it in backwards. Because again, everything comes off and goes back on in a certain order. Now, <clears throat> next thing I want you to... I will direct your attention to is this. Now, some of you may recognize this, of course, is the check spring. This is the, a very important part of a tension assembly because your thread gets wrapped um, in coordination with this spring. And as your take-up arm pulls, this spring pushes against the thread. It's part of the tensioning of the, the machine. Now, what you may not notice right away is that there is, I'm going to zoom in even more because I really want you to see 
notice that there is part of the top of this spring is wrapped here, but the rest of the spring is on the other side of what basically are coming off next with the spring, and that is the uh, tension discs, okay? Now, I'm gonna pull this off and I wanna make sure that you guys see, uh, I, I highly recommend that every time you disassemble one piece of your tension assembly, take photographs, take a series of them. This will be very helpful to you. Now, also notice the position of the check spring because the check spring goes on to the machine in a specific position. Now, as I pull this off, I'm pulling it off together and one of the things, I'm holding this together, this is like a sandwich. If you let go, it'll all go rolling around. So I just pulled off the, the tension discs, the check spring, which I have uh, sandwiched with them. And there is actually, it's a little difficult to see, but there's a little hole right here. And when you go to put these back, there is, of course, a little shaft here, a little, another little ear that's going to go in there. So you'll, you'll know where to position that, but this is the part with the check spring I want to kind of show you. Let me turn this up, get a little bit, little distance. So here it is. You've got the check spring in the position it was. Again, I'm holding this together. Don't let go of it. But if I turn it on the back, now you can see what's, what's on the other side. You have, what you see here is, is um, actually this is a, a sort of a cover for two, let's turn it in profile, you will see two tension discs, and they look like little coins. And there's one, there's the shaft, excuse me, there's the cover and this little pin, and then you will see, I'm trying to hold this and not drop it. <laughs> um, there's one of your tension discs, and then here's the other. There it is, right there. So now you can see that little sandwich. Well, what's on the uh, back side? Well, there's the rest of your check spring, so which is kind of strange looking the way they, uh, the way the check spring and the discs sort of work together. So what are we going to do? You will see that I'm going to try to get this in a good position. I want you guys to see. I know it's a little hard to try to imagine how this comes off. Well, the reason is <clears throat> if I turn it to the side, what you may see is that the check spring is, is sort of a, a U-shaped uh, on the part that you see when, it, when the machine's operating. And the actual spring has a space, and that's where our disks and cover were. So let me, do, let me redo that, and I'll show you. When we put it back together, it'll make more sense to you. So this, this piece here, the top part of the spring, is going to sit on the outer rim or the outer center of the cover of the two um, tension discs, right? And then the bulk of the spring, which is actually in the back, it's like a sleeve, right? So the discs and all fit almost like a letter in an envelope, if you will. I don't know if that's a good comparison or not. So <clears throat> uh, now that we have our spring, I'm going to set the spring uh, down sort of in the position that it was in. The spring looks great, by the way, and just to, <clears throat> to show you all what a, what a nerd I am about old vintage machines, even things like springs, you guys have heard me talk about bolts and screws and how they were made better than springs were too. You can get replacement springs for singers. So if any of you ever have a spring that's damaged or broken, uh, don't, uh, don't panic because you can get a replacement and they work fine, but, but again, to, to imagine a spring like this that has lasted for 70 years, that, uh, I'm, I, you know, it doesn't take much to impress me, I guess. In any case, so here's the cover <clears throat> that I was showing you. Let's pan out a little bit. It was a little too close up there. So here's the cover piece, and behind it are the two discs. Now, normally, uh, you don't see very much here. Sometimes there's nothing to see. Sometimes there are pieces of thread that will get caught. Uh, if they're going to get caught, they will often get caught between the two discs. But they have not. Now, what do you see here? What do I see here? I see what 
looks like either a little bit of old sewing oil or it could be some light oxidation. The parts of this assembly, other than the plastic pieces, are, are manufactured of very high quality steel and the steel was normally coated, electro-coated maybe, with nickel. But over 70 years, some oxidation, uh, you know, you can see it in the little inner part of the donut there, if you will. Maybe you guys can see that. And on the back, there's a little bit, mostly I think it may be just some old oil. Oil never gets put in here, but I will show you uh, what we're going to do with these discs. We'll get them cleaned up. And notice that the discs face each other. This, in other words, the, the convex or the concave ends are on the outside, right? So there's a raised section and then there's a concave section. You want the raised sections together, right? And that's where your thread lives when it goes through that tension disc. If it wasn't for these, you could not really make a stitch on a sewing machine. Now, uh, that was basically, and I'll pan down so you guys can see, that was the disassembly of a Singer 301 tension assembly. And I think I've got everything here. You'll see, of course, the, <clears throat> the chromed, or it's actually nickel-plated uh, adjusting screw, tension screw. You see the first piece I took off. Then you see the little uh, washer. I call it the stop washer. You see the beehive spring. You see the piece. And, and these things are down. They will, when they come up, they will go back in the order they went. And then you've got the cover um, and the little, the little uh, pin ear here that's going to go back into the machine. And then, of course, you have the two uh, tension discs and you have your check spring. And that is everything that I'm taking off in this case. And before we end, I'll just zoom back in to show you well, what's left. What's left is this piece right here. And now you see the entire sort of unit. This is the, the threaded shaft of a tension assembly. And as I, I showed you guys the little set screw on the side here, if this needed to be removed, we could. In this case, I'm not. Uh, when I have an issue, if I have a tension assembly and I can't get the little pin that you saw in the side to, to flow freely and to play and coordinate with the, uh, the uh, presser lever when it comes up. Uh, if that was an issue, then we would be taking the whole unit out and inspecting that. But we don't need to, and normally I don't. It's, I have before, but it's very rare that that's even needed. Um, now, let's zoom in and I'll show you basically what is there left to see here. Uh, there is an adjustment screw right here. Uh, I have no reason to change this. And what that does is it will tilt uh, the uh, tension assembly uh, in either direction. But there's no reason to do that. I would leave yours be unless you're having issues with uh, lining up thread. and things. That's very unusual. I think um, in all the nine years I've done this, I think on one occasion I ended up adjusting that. So it should not be an issue. Uh, if you ever take this off, you'll want, again, photograph the position that this, that this little uh, bracket piece is on that screw. Just pay attention to it. And what I'm doing here, there's a little bit of old oil that I'm taking off. And I think I've got, there's a little, you can get access. If there's any dust or dirt back here, you can get to it. There's not really any, but uh, eh, maybe a tad. This isn't bad. Nothing like the, like the feed dogs that uh, I showed you guys on this machine. So uh, <clears throat> when I get ready to reassemble this, I will, uh, I'll show you, I'm going to put, uh, I'll put a little, a, a drop or two of sewing oil so that everything can screw back on. And I'm probably, not probably, I am going to take my uh, cotton swab and I am going to flatten it and see if I need to get it in here. This again, there's just a, it's just a little bit of dirt. Not much because not much can get in here. It's mostly sealed. Um, but there you go, guys. That is the disassembly of the uh, Singer 301. Uh, the disassembly of the tension assembly. 
And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys what I am going to do to clean up these tension discs. Uh, basically, the thread comes uh, on this flat surface. The inner surface, no, but I suspect that flat surface may have just a few little places that could use some polishing. So I'm going to break out the metal polish, and I'll do that in the next video, and then we'll get it reassembled. Thanks for watching.